Oh, hi there. I didn't see you watching. I didn't know you found my ASMR channel. <laughs> Now, you guys that watch normally know I do these weird intros, but everybody else that was like about to subscribe was just like, oh, this is not the right channel. Yo, what's up guys? Sam here. Welcome back to another one. Hey, we've got some news to share. I mean, believe it or not, that's like why I'm making the video. There's like news to talk about finally. Hey, we got our first look at the all new MacBook Air, the benchmarks for the new M1 iPad Pro and iMac have leaked. And we've got a weird story about Apple working on a, a Nintendo Switch-like device. Keep watching, it's gonna get real interesting. If you're excited for this one, drop a like down below. Hit subscribe for more. Let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so kicking things off, we're gonna play some soccer. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real kicking things off, I want to talk about the new M1 devices, the iPad Pro and the iMac that are coming out next week. I know it feels like these were announced a million years ago. I know you feel like you pre-ordered these a million years ago. It's actually been two million years, but these are actually coming sometime next week. Right at this very moment, there's a ton of people already going hands-on with them. And we know this because the benchmarks have started leaking, not only for the new iMac and the iPad Pro. You literally just go on Geekbench, you type in the model number, and you see all the reviewers that are testing their stuff. It's you know, it's a dead giveaway that they have the devices already. And before even looking at the benchmarks, you might go, well, Sam, what's the point of talking about the M1 specs and benchmarks, considering that we already have the M1 chip? Well, there's a chance it can be clocked different. There's a chance the performance on iPad can be different. There's a chance that the new iMac can be faster. So I wanted to delve into all of this and tell you my key takeaways. Number one, the new iPad Pro is just like, I don't know, it just feels too good. Maybe it should be this good, but I don't get why it's got an M1 inside yet. Yeah, it's 50% faster than the last iPad Pro. And get this, the iPad Pro with M1 is 33% faster than the next closest iOS device, which was like the A12X chip. 33% faster than everything else Apple sells with their A-series chips in it. And it's still like an iOS, iPad OS device. I'm just confused still, okay? I don't get it. And moving on to the iMac, I was hoping, praying, sacrificing a couple of small animals to see if we could get better performance on the new iMac. And it's it's consistent, you know, it's not any better or worse. Like, shocker, the M1 chip is clocked almost identical in every single device that Apple has put it in so far. There was a part of me that's like, maybe there's something that'll make the performance on the iMac better than everything else we've seen, just because this is like, I don't know, six-ish months newer than the other M1 devices, but nope, same performance, same expectation, really good scores. It, it's also more powerful than like the, you know, the high spec MacBook Pro, and it's even got a higher single core score because it's M1 than the Mac Pro. So it's really good. It's really good. I'm really excited for these devices. Like these specs just confirm that like it is M1, it is no better, it is no worse. It is a performance we should expect. Okay, you guys let me know what you think about that down below. Are you getting either of these devices? But listen, if this guy's not gonna sit here and tell you the truth, then I will. He ain't been using protection. He's been raw dogging everything out there, all right? And he's caught them all, as they say. He's gotta start being safe online. He's gotta use We... My accent went away, but he's gotta use WeVPN. Listen, you guys know WeVPN. They're the guys that came from all the other VPN companies doing sketchy stuff with your data to create a fundamentally better product that was one of the best, fastest, and most reliable options on the entire market. And recently I've heard some birds chirping outside, which means that it's spring and WeVPN has launched their spring sale for the two years plan, which gets you 73% off in two months for free at only $2.69 a month. This gives you access to all their premium features, over 50 server locations around the world, and even the ability to unblock content from Netflix, Hulu, BBC iPlayer, and so much more. And when you enter the code IUPDATE at checkout, you get an additional 10% off. So my challenge is this, whether you've been using a different VPN for years, ew, yuck, or this is your first time hearing about a VPN, head over to wevpn.com slash iUpdate today if you trust me, if you like what I do here, and start staying safer online. And I had to like rehydrate before this next story because uh, it's also confusing. And I bet you guys got your cellular nucleosis going on already trying to figure out the M1 and the iPad Pro. How about an Apple gaming device and specifically a competitor to the Nintendo Switch. Just wanna say before we jump into this that I don't think it's happening, I think this rumor is complete BS, and I don't even think you should listen to this part of the video because I don't think it's gonna happen. We're probably just gonna be like let down or disappointed. However, there is a sketchy rumor that popped up on a South Korean forum site when someone was asking like, do you think Apple would ever make a Nintendo Switch device? And someone very factually, a random commenter, and basically just leaked this device um, saying that it's going to be a portable, mobile gaming device um, 
And then they also give some information about like the specs. The source said that rather than Apple using an A or M series chip, so not what's in Macs and not what's in iPhones or iPads, Apple would use a different series of chip, like something entirely new with brand new GPU capabilities, accelerated GPU capabilities, and even support things like ray tracing. Ray tracing just means that the reflections, like while you're playing a game, would look really nice. It's like a new-ish technology. It came out on the PS5 and Xbox. It's been on PCs for years. The reason this gets me excited is that Apple could actually be developing a chip with a better GPU, which would allow the Mac to game finally. And I don't know if that's what this is, but there's just like the part of me that was telling you don't believe any of this. There's the other part of me that's hoping that we finally see some kind of Apple device that is just made for gaming because they've never done it. They also say that Apple is working with like Ubisoft to make games, which some other credible source has actually said that, but nobody credible has mentioned any of these other details that a mobile specific style gaming device, it just doesn't sound like Apple. Like Apple has the iPhone, and they're gonna basically make a bigger iPhone with controllers built in. I think that's great for Nintendo. I don't think it's great for Apple. But I am intrigued by the idea that Apple could be working on chips for products that have better graphics processing. I mean, that's always where the Mac has struggled. If Apple could just get ahead there, like they've killed the entire PC market with the M1. No one should buy anything but an M1 chip in my opinion. But if you're into gaming, you can't just buy an M1 chip. You can't just get a Mac and game. I mean. Most games aren't supported on Mac. I can play like League of Legends. I, I, I can play like League of Legends on my computer. That's like all I can play. And while I love that game dearly, and I think about every day, man, there would actually be zero games I could play on Mac if this wasn't here. I would love to see Apple work on it. So Apple Switch rumor, I don't think it's happening. Apple GPU better ray tracing processor rumor. I think that's way more realistic than anything else. But by far the most exciting thing I saw in the past week was that we got our first look at the new 2021 MacBook Air. Now I say 2021, there's a chance it could come next year, but right now, Sources that are credible seem to agree it could launch as soon as the fall of this year. And this MacBook Air, unlike the last MacBook Air with M1, is not just going to be the same thing with an M1 chip inside. It's going to be redesigned, rebuilt from the ground up. And, uh, you know, Mark Gurman, when, who's 90% accurate, said, like, it's going to be even thinner and lighter. And I mean, if you look at the MacBook Air right now, if you're like me, you might say, how do you make this thinner and lighter? Like, how do you make the MacBook Air thinner and lighter, like it's already paper thin. Well, you could just make it thinner and lighter, apparently. Because that's what Apple is doing. And I've actually seen the images of the new MacBook Air. I can't show you the raw images, uh, and neither can John Prosser, the source of this, because, you know, people, you could see too much information, but they have made renders based off of these images, and they're spot on. So this is a radical new design for the MacBook Air, and it looks kind of like two iPads just put together. So it's got the new design language that Apple's putting on pretty much everything. You've got the sharper edges here and the design is no longer tapered. So it is completely flat. Like that's what made me say it looks like two iPads. It doesn't go down a little bit like the MacBook Air, it's just straight. So it'd be a pretty different look for the MacBook Air, more similar to something like the MacBook Pro. But before even looking at like the way the edges work, you've probably noticed like, hey, this is a little colorful for something that normally comes in like gold, silver, and space gray. That's because Apple is taking the iMac design language and bringing it to the MacBook Air, including, based on the leak, the next MacBook Air will have white bezels just like the iMac, and I know that we all feel a little bit different about the white bezels. But can we at least appreciate the colors here? I mean, Apple's probably gonna do the same thing. Lighter, more washed out color on the inside of the MacBook, the, the bezels, what you're looking at. Super bright, vibrant colors like the new iMac on the outside. I mean, these colors look incredible. Like these renders look absolutely phenomenal. And you've also got a USB-C port on each side. So it would even be better than the IO that we got on like the original MacBook that vaguely looked like this. The keyboard is getting upgraded to have a full size function row as well. And then Touch ID will likely be laid here on like the top right hand corner, just like the new Magic Keyboard. But one of the bigger changes actually comes on, on the rubber feet. There are no rubber feet anymore on the bottom. There are just these two rubber bars that apparently are like the same as the iMac. The iMac apparently has this on the base to keep it in place. So Apple would be bringing that to the MacBook Air now, which, you know, sure. I mean, sure, they, it's rubber feet. How can I have an opinion on rubber feet? It looks fine. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this down below, but I actually really like it. Like, I didn't think I would enjoy white bezels, but I think it does a great job of Apple differentiating from their lower end and higher end devices. Plus, it's, it's a great callback to like the G3 series of products with like a little bit more plasticky or 
retro. I don't know. There's something about it. It's got some got some heart in it. It's got some spirit. Like the colors make the Mac feel fun again. I'm just so happy that it's not another Space Gray MacBook. It's so boring. I want something fresh. I want something hot. I want a hot take and I like this, but um, I have a feeling there's a lot of you that will be like, this is worse. And to be honest, it's not even that far of a stretch considering that the prior generation MacBook Air had silver bezels. So it's like, let's calm down here. We've already had weird bezels on the MacBook Air. It's not like this is unprecedented. And I, I think white actually would be better than silver. But as far as content viewing on white bezels, well, hey, the iMac comes out in about a week and a half. So I'll let you know when I get mine, how it is and how much I'll probably end up hating the white bezels, but how much I am happy to see the new design. I'll let you know that as well. That is all for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like down below. Love all of you. Hit that subscribe for more. I've been Sam. I'll talk to you in my next video.